production. Electricity has become an unavoidable necessity in our life. Electricity is needed to run most appliances we use, from televisions, motor to draw water, fans to trains and buses. Sometimes we use a torch as a source of light. A torch also runs on electricity. The electric current in a torch is produced by a device called the electric cell. How does a torch work? A torch contains a bulb and an electric cell connected to each other. The electric cell. You must have used small electric cells many times to play with your toys or to use a camera. Very small electric cells are also used in calculators, watches and other devices. All these cells have a similar basic structure. All electric cells have a positive and a negative terminal. Inside the cell, there is a mixture of chemicals which produce current. The terminals provide passage for the current to flow from the cell to the device. When these chemicals get used up, the cell stops working and has to be replaced. The most common electric cell that we use is the dry cell. It is made up of a zinc container which acts as a negative terminal. Inside, it contains a paste of chemicals which is connected to the positive terminal through a carbon rod. The dry cell is used in toys, cameras, torches and radios. Dry cell can be used only once, hence it is also called a primary cell. These days, new types of cells are being made which can be used again and again. These are called secondary cells. These need to be recharged with electricity for repeated use. So, the cell in a mobile phone is a secondary cell. When it stops providing current, it has to be recharged. Most of the time, a single cell does not provide enough current to run a device. In such cases, more than one cell are connected to each other. This arrangement is called a battery. Batteries are very commonly used in inverters and cars. These days, new types of batteries are being made which can generate current with the help of sunlight. Such batteries are called solar cells. You may see a solar battery connected to a traffic light. During the day, in presence of sunlight, the battery makes and stores electricity. This is then used up at night. Solar cells are also very common in calculators. Let us now look at an electric bulb. 1. Glass bulb. 2. Low pressure inert gas. 3. Tungsten filament. 4. Contact wire goes out of the stem. 5. Contact wire goes into the stem. 6. Support wires. 7. Stem. Glass mount. 8. Contact wire goes out of the stem. 9. Cap. Sleeve. 10. Insulation. Vitrite. 11. Electrical contact. Fact. The electricity we use in our homes comes from different sources such as oil, nuclear power, coal, natural gas, the sun or other natural sources. Before we began generating electricity over 100 years ago, fireplaces and stoves kept homes warm, kerosene lamps and candles lit homes and food was kept cool in ice boxes or underground storage cellars and flow. As we saw earlier, current can flow only through a circuit. An electric circuit contains the following. 1. An electric cell or battery which can generate current. 2. Wires which allow the current to pass through them. These are generally made of copper or aluminium. 3. A device which needs current to work. For example, a bulb, hair dresser and toy fan. For the current to flow, the device and the battery are joined through the wires to make a closed loop. When this circuit is complete, the current will flow and the device will work. This is called a closed circuit. If even one of the connections is open, the current will not flow through the circuit. This is called an open circuit. Generally, in a circuit, current is set to flow from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. What is a fuse? Sometimes a bulb does not glow even on passing current. Observe such a bulb. You will find that the filament of the bulb is broken. Such a bulb is said to be fused. 
A fuse is also used as a safety device in electrical circuits in our homes. It contains a thin copper wire connected to the circuit. If too much of current passes through it, it melts and breaks, causing the circuit to become open. Thus, the current stops flowing, preventing an accident. What is an electric switch? Sometimes we do not need a continuous supply of current. We need to stop the flow of current so that the device can stop working when not in use. This can be done by an electric switch. We use electric switches all the time to switch on or turn off the lights, fans and torches. Let us see what an electric switch is. An electric switch opens or closes an electric circuit. Activity 12.4 Aim to study the working of an electric switch. Method Take an A4 size cardboard sheet. Fix two board pins on one side of the cardboard at a distance of 1 cm from each other. Take an electric cell and attach one wire each to its terminals. Now, connect one of these wires to one terminal of the bulb and the other wire to one of the board pins. Take a safety pin and attach it to one of the board pins. Now, take a new electric wire and attach its one end to the free terminal of the bulb. Attach the other end to the board pin which is not joined to the cell. You will notice that the bulb does not glow. Now, rotate the safety pin and touch it to the other board pin. And wow, the bulb starts glowing. The safety pin acts as an electric switch. When it touches both the board pins, the circuit is closed and the current flows through it. Hence, the bulb glows. The switch is said to be on. When the safety pin does not touch both the board pins, the circuit is open and the current does not flow through it. The switch is said to be off. Does all matter allow electric current to pass through them? So far, we have created circuits in which we have used cells with metal containers and wires. These materials allow the current to pass through them. Such materials are called conductors. All metals are conductors. Apart from these, graphite is a form of carbon which is a conductor. Materials such as plastic, glass, wood and rubber do not allow electricity to pass through them.